Okay, so let's see. We, we are set up here to get the class average. Now let me show you something. If you select all these, down here in the bottom, it tells you the average, how many, and what the sum is. That if As long as all of these are numbers, it will always do that. You could click on the column heading, but that's a quick way if you just quickly need an answer. But we want to put a formula in here to compute it for us as a part of this. So let's see. Equals average open parenthesis. I want to average all these numbers. Ooh, I need one more. And we're going to have to make sure that our box went the whole way down. Uh, let's see, to 21. Yeah, it did. G21. And then close it. 69.5. Oh, look. <laughs> That's a passing grade. I must have pulled the formula down to here. And we don't really want that formula in there. All right. And we have a box around that from going up here to the borders. It's put a thick box. You see, and we're on the home tab. And here's the borders box. And you can choose what to do there. And now let me show you here. Like, let's say, oh, is anybody failing? Okay, he's failing, but he hasn't taken the first test yet. I don't know if this will help him or not, but let's say he came and takes the first test and gets 100%. Oh, it does help him. And see, that automatically updated. So the fact that you've got a formula in there instead of looking at it to change it, that will update when you put in the missing data. And that is a very handy thing. Now let's say this person gets it. Well, he's already passing. Well, let's say he gets a, an 11 on that. Now he's failing. Okay, and it will automatically update the information there. And it, it updates the average. Okay, let's look at some other formulas that are often very, very handy. Especially when you've got a lot more data than this. Like an entire school or all the math classes in a school. So here we can get the total number of students. Now this we can easily do just by looking, but you can't always get the total number just by looking. So the formula for count and tell me how many students are here is equal count A. Now count, there's several different count formulas, like count if and Count A is just tell me how many cells have a have something in them. So count A from here to here. We want to skip the header row because we don't want to count that. So from B2 to B21 and close it. And it tells us there are 20 students. All right, here's just a little helpful hint. If you have a, some kind of data that you might be adding students to, I always put rows at the top. So let me insert a row here. And I put my formulas at the top because you don't know how far down the roster data might end up being. And let's say I want to count the number of students in this after school program, but students are going to be added throughout the year. So I put the formula here equals count A open parenthesis. Now here's what I do. I just go a little ways because I've got this data going a long way down, but I don't have 9,000. So I go up here and I just change the number to 9,000 because that's way past where my data goes. Okay, so this tells me I've got 60 kids. So it's counting how many kids' names are between B5 and B9000. There's 60. Well, if, if I add a kid, because I went down to 9000, which is more than I would ever have in this program, it 
adds the, it, the count updates. Now we're going to do another count formula. The last one was count A, which counts the number of cells that have something in it. Now we want to count the number of students who have a passing grade. We're going to put that in this cell. And that is lined up with where we put the whether the kids have passed or failed. So I go up, I go in here. I always like to write my formulas in the formula bar up here. You could write it here, I think. And then it just shows up up here. But it's safer to be up here. So equals. And now we're going to, we want to count if the grade is a P, if they passed. So instead of count A, which counted how many things just have an alpha character, now we're going to count if. And see, I did not have it in caps, but it's going to switch it to caps for me. So count if, open parenthesis, and now see it tells us here we need the range. Count if in what range? From here to here. Count if, comma, because there's commas between the arguments. And what's the criteria? Remember, if it's a not a number, if it's alpha, it has to be in quotes. So count if it's a P. And then close it, close parenthesis. And it counts those for us. 15. 15 students passed. And if something were to change, let's say this kid ends up with a zero because he never makes that up. Oh, he still passed. <laughs> uh, let's see. And that kid failed. Let's give him 100. Maybe he'll pass then. Yep. This will automatically update. And see, that's the beauty of this. If you've got data, which you always have things that you need to update, when you're using formulas, everything just updates correctly because of the formula. Okay, now let's say we want to fill in this box. And notice when you click in a cell, it will highlight over here on the side to tell you where you're at. So if you're having trouble knowing what's this lined up with, click in there and this tells us percentage of students who are passing. Well, the percentage of students who are passing is going to be equals the number who are passing. Where I, so I click in there, and up here it writes for me H24, because that's that cell, divided by the total number of students. And then I hit return. And if we add more students, of course that'd be a problem here because we don't have any room. But if the number of students passing changes, this will automatically update. It'll be just a cascade of everything will update. Let's go in and give this kid a 100. Let's see, this updates, the average updates, the number of students passing updates, the percentage updates. And we've labeled this the percentage of students who are passing. We don't want anybody to think that it's 0.8%. So let it, up here, we can change the way that's displayed to be a percent. That's 80%. 80% of the kids are passing. Okay, let's just look at a few more formulas. Um, we can get the maximum score for any test and the minimum score. The formula for those, I bet you could guess, equals max, open parenthesis, and we'll just select the range of the numbers. Oh, maximum is 100, and we can pull that across. And the minimum score equals min, open parenthesis, and pull that across. The average score for each test equals average. and then pull that across.
Oh, and look at that. We need to format. Now let's use our rounding equals round. And let's round it zero. And pull that across. So there you go.